Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from my former home base, Munich Airport. What a sunny day. Today we're going to be doing a video with the German most famous airline, Lufthansa. We're going to be looking at the Airbus A350 and perform an outside check. Thomas, the fleet captain here of Munich, is going to be taking us around and he's going to point out the important things to look out for during the outside check. So let's get started. One, two. Hi, my name is Thomas Jan. I'm a captain on the 350 for Lufthansa and I'm also fleet captain long range in Munich. Today, I will do the outside check together with Captain Joe. So we'll do the walk around of the plane. I'll explain a bit here and there what we're looking for and uh, how it all works and what pilots do during this exterior walk around. Okay, so first things to do is you have to prepare the aircraft for the walk around, set the parking brake to on, prepare the nav lights to be inspected whether or not they're working. And then let's get up and let's get dressed for the outside check. Okay, after coming down the stairs, we take a right turn towards the left-hand forward fuselage and the first thing to inspect is the wing and engine scan lights. Now, I would recommend turning them on when performing your walk around at night as they light up the leading edge of your wing and the engine intake. Then we take a glance at the three static probes. Now, their protective covers need to be removed and the surface needs to be clean. Then moving forward to the crew oxygen discharge indicator. Now the one on the left needs to show green and the crew oxygen ventilation outlet on the right needs to be clear. Next to that is the battery exhaust which shall be clear and below that is the taxi camera light. Check for any cracks in the glass. And at the bottom of the fuselage make sure the avionics compartment door is closed. Moving forward and looking upwards to the standby static probe, the standby pitot probe, the multifunction probe, the AOA probe and the ice detector probe. Yet again, their red protective covers need to be removed and that nothing is obstructing these important probes and sensors. Then we continue to the no section and ensure that the radome is closed and latched. Just below the windshield, check the condition of the ice detection visual indicators and that the wipers are in the upright and off position. Then focus on the nose landing gear. Use your flashlight to light up the wheel well and ensure everything is in order. Make sure the downlock springs are in good condition and that the safety pin is removed. Now in this clip, the plane was parked for a maintenance stop and therefore the safety pin was in place. The safety pin has to be removed, otherwise the nose landing gear won't retract. Then check the six takeoff lights for cracks in the glass or burnt out light bulbs, as you would do also for the taxi light and the runway turnoff lights. As you follow down, check the nose gear structure is okay and not entirely compressed. The wheels and tires shall not have any deep cuts on the side walls and the profile needs to have enough depth. As you walk around the landing gear, ensure that none of the hydraulic lines are leaking and there aren't any loose electrical wires. And then we walk towards the right hand forward fuselage and yet again check that the protective covers are removed of the standby static probe, the two multifunction probes and the ice detector probe. Below, check that the nose landing gear door opening handle is stowed away then the ground electrical power door, if it's not in use, ensure it's closed and latched and that the taxi camera light and the battery exhaust are in good condition. Then we have the access doors and the cargo door. They need to be closed and latched and that the wing and engine scan light isn't damaged. Below the scan light, we have three more static probes. Yet again, the covers need to be removed and the area around them needs to be smooth and clean. And once more, the crew oxygen discharge indicator needs to be green and the crew oxygen ventilation outlet is clear. Then continue to the lower center fuselage and check the state of the antennas. Now you have six radio altimeters, two TCAS and two DME antennas. 
further down is the avionics ventilation overboard valve which needs to be clear so mind your hair as hot air comes from that valve ensure the lens of the taxi camera is clean and then check the condition of the large VHF2 antenna and the state of the outflow valve. Then continue to the drain mast which needs to be intact and no ice should be hanging off of it and that the smaller marker antenna is in good shape. Then over to the two pack bay ventilation air intakes which need to be free and the emergency ram air inlet flap should be closed followed by the larger right and left hand pack air intakes which have to be free of any obstructions and the multiple access doors if not in use need to be closed and latched further down make sure the beacon light is intact and left and right of it, the pack air outlets aren't blocked. Then we walk under the right center wing and check the condition of the fuel tank inerting system oxygen exhaust. Right of that is the fuel water drain valve of the wing tank, which shouldn't be leaking. Then come forward to check the condition of the landing light and slat one in between the wing root and the engine mount. Then you should focus your attention to engine number two, starting with the starter valve override access that it is closed and the aerodynamic strake is intact. Then ensure there is no leakage coming from the drain mast followed by the fan cowls which need to be closed and latched. Then move forward and check for the condition of the engine inlet and the 22 fan blades, the pressure temperature sensor, and then hunch down for the engine anti-ice exhaust grid. Walk to the other side of the engine and glance at the engine oil fill access door that it is closed and latched then kneel down to look for a clear engine ventilation exhaust grid. At the rear part of the engine, check the turbine exhaust, the fan exhaust, and the oil cooler heat exchangers are in good condition. And last but not least, the reverser cowls are closed and latched. Then move over to the right hand wing leading edge and make sure slats two, three and four are flush with the leading edge and don't have any foreign object damage. Just behind slat three is the refuel coupling door, which if not in use, needs to be closed and latched. Then continue with slats five, six, and seven for any visible damage. On the underside of the wing, the surge tank air inlet has to be clear. Next to that is the fuel ventilation overpressure disc, which has to be intact. And behind that are the aileron actuator air inlets and the fuel water drain valve of the surge tank isn't leaking. Then walk to the outer part of the wing and check the condition of the navigation and strobe lights. The green navigation light has to be illuminated because remember we specifically turned it on beforehand. Right of that is the winglet with static discharges of which none should be missing. Now this picture here shows the antennas on the top of the fuselage, which are somewhat difficult to check from below, but you could check the functionality of most of them from the cockpit. Then slowly walk to the trailing edge of the wing and make sure the control surfaces are clear of any ice and snow. Next to the ailerons is the jettison outlet, if installed. Sadly not on this aircraft, but on others it shouldn't be leaking. Walking further towards the fuselage, check the state of the flaps and fairings, that they are flush with the wing and nothing is hanging out. In between the fairings, make sure the taxi camera light is intact. 
Then you approach the right hand main landing gear. Make sure that the chocks are in place and holding. Then look for any deep cuts on the sidewalls of the tires and that sufficient profile is given and all bolts are fastened on the wheel. Then come to the front of the landing gear truck and check the brakes and brake wear indicators are intact and not flush with the indicator. There is one brake wear indicator per wheel. Then give the hydraulic lines a glance that they are securely connected and none are leaking. Above the hydraulic lines are the downlock springs which need to be under tension and not sagging. And then check the overall condition of the landing gear structure that nothing is out of the ordinary. After long turnarounds or maintenance checks, make sure the safety pins preventing the main gear from retracting are removed by a mechanic. Finally, check that the up lock hook on the main gear is in the open position. Then walk under the center fuselage and check for leaks at the drain mast. Continue with the multiple access panels that they are latched and closed. Walk towards the ram air turbine doors and check that they are closed and flush with the fuselage. Yet again, no leaks from the drain mast and the outflow valve should be open unless set otherwise. Then have a look at the access door and cargo door. If not currently in use, make sure they are closed and nothing is hanging out of the cargo door. As you continue further to the back, check for tail strike damage on the lower fuselage structure. Then spot the small ventilation outlet, which should be clear. Walk a few steps back to get a good view of the horizontal stabilizer, elevator, fin and rudder to check their overall condition. Foreign object damage can often be seen on the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer from picked up debris by the tire. On the trailing edge of the elevator and rudder, ensure static discharges aren't missing. Then look at the APU drain mast for any leakage and that the APU access doors are closed. The white navigation light should be illuminated and the strobe lights should be intact. On the upper side, check that the APU air intake and that the APU exhaust is free. Then walk to the left hand aft fuselage, check for the second small ventilation outlet to be clear and the lavatory and galley's air extraction outlet is not obstructed and that the bulk door, if it was used, is securely closed. Moving forward, you look for the supplemental cooling air intake and its respective supplemental cooling air outlets to be clear. From there on, the same items need to be checked as you did on the right hand side of the aircraft. The outside check is to be taken seriously as a damage, a leak, a broken off sensor, an incorrect closing of an access door can have a direct impact on the safety of the next flight. An exterior walk around won't take you longer than 10 minutes. Please wear warm clothing during winter operation, a reflective vest, ear protection, and do not use your phone light for your exterior walk around at night. Invest in a decent flashlight. Be a professional pilot and use the opportunity to check the condition of your plane. Plus, enjoy the moment of fresh air and moving your legs a little during a long day at work. Okay, Joe. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we did the entire walk around of the plane. Two pilots. It doesn't happen too often. You know, <laughs> normally, I'm all by myself, or he would do it all by himself. But uh, we had a very good look at all the different holes of the planes, <laughs> and we didn't find anything. It looked good. It's, it's, it. it's ready to fly. And it will fly later this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I haven't checked where it's supposed to go, but it, <laughs> it will go. Um, and we're happy with that. It's a good plane that we could give to other pilots, isn't it? Absolutely. I want to say a huge thank you to Thomas and especially Lufthansa for making this possible today. It's been a huge pleasure to be here. I hope you learned a lot from this video to get the outside check or a 
sort of an inside view of what us pilots do when we do the outside check of an AZ50. That's it for today. Please follow the Lufthansa Views account on Instagram. Go and check out that. There's some really, really nice pictures there. You'll be seeing a couple of pictures of me there too. And that's it for today. Here is your checklist. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And perform a touch and go at my website. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.